But why can Drake not do a stadium? He cannot do a stadium. Supposedly the biggest artist in the world. He can't. Michael Jackson could easily do stadiums. I ain't talking about arenas. The weekend can do it easily. Drake cannot. You can't lie behind the lip syncing, homie. It's hard to lip sync in the stadium. Nobody wants him. Ha ha. And you know. And I know. And she know. Ha ha. Try to hear that sh man. Apparently, I've been running out of all the North American access to steal. He's making a run from the border. Let's see what it's all about. What's the business, y'all? It's your local neighborhood Super Rig off in this thing. Welcome to What's the Business News Break with your boy Super Rig. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe. And if you like our podcast, This Current Culture, make sure you go and join and become a This Current Culture Crew member right there on our front page. Let's get into this news. Now, according to this Twitter post, uh, Drake has started a new channel or a new label called PFL and has a one album deal with Mexican artist Chino Pacas. It seems like Drake was also hinting at this on his new song, What's Up? You guys know I can't stomach that music, so. Hey, I keep telling y'all, man, Drake's not going anywhere. He has too much money, too much fame. He can keep releasing as much music as he wants to. He understands his real power comes from him colonizing other people. So now he's even going to the point of getting Mexicans. Like, bro, and if you understand anything about the music business, you understand that the mass majority of artists don't really make money. They only make money when you start a label. And you start profiting off other people. Like, that's capitalism. Capitalism one-on-one, right? So Drake, you can easily tell his motive has never been about the music itself. He's only used music because... It's popular. It gets him the narcissistic supply that he wants. You feel me? In any other generation, any other time period, he will be chasing after whatever gets him the most power. So if gladiators, you feel me, gave him a bunch of power, then he would try to be a gladiator. If he would want to be a, uh, a politician or some type of clergyman the, the a pastor or preacher anything like that he's searching after powerful positions it's not even about the music itself you can just tell that just by his frequency the energy he puts out the fact that he doesn't mix master doesn't produce he barely writes his own music he sees the music industry as an enterprise it's a business straight up and there's nothing wrong with that but it's way too many people that have done both, that have respected the craft of the music and also have made the money. Hail Michael Jackson, Prince, Beyonce, Usher, Kendrick Lamar. Everybody that we know, all of our favorites are our favorites because they have their business handled as well as their music. But with Drake, it's almost so obvious that it's business, business, business. Strictly business and algorithms and numbers is almost like a scientific equation. And now, man, it's going to get even worse. And Drake fans, swear to God, you're just hating on Drake. No, I'm hating on pedophiles, man. Stop thinking that you can hypnotize us with the music. I'm not a Christian at all, but I understood that Satan was the angel of music. Frequency is everything. If you understand how our brains work, the first thing we feel is the frequency. Then it hits our brain, goes upside down and everything, and then it projects out what we see. So he understands that. Billionaires, they understand this. Everyone else, we don't understand that. We're just catching on. You don't understand that the mass majority of society couldn't read throughout most of history. During medieval times, only about 1% of the population could read. During slavery, we were considered three-fifths of a person. We couldn't read. Now, we're finally able to catch up to the mass majority of society. You feel me? It's been 30,000 years of recorded human history. We're just now catching up. It's going to take some time, but hey, it's no different than the first time that someone ran the first four-minute mile. Then as soon as we as human beings saw that it was possible, all of a sudden, everyone started doing it. It became, not almost say everybody, but it became a more natural occurrence. It's no different than the Tony Hawk 900. I saw a few weeks ago that there was a nine-year-old that did the 900 three times back to back to back. 
And if you're a spiritual person, you know Cat Williams, he started this whole entire thing off at the beginning of the year. I, I truly believe we're entering into this age of Aquarius where we as a people are getting better. I know we have this joke as iPad kids. You feel me? I'm 1998 born. But understand, whenever I have a question, I immediately go to YouTube. I go to Google. I go to TikTok. I go to ChatGPT. I figure out the answer. I went to school. I got my degree in computer animation. But everything I learned about business, branding, marketing, editing, like a bunch of things that I can learn, I just went straight to YouTube. I never had that mindset like a lot of the older generations where they have this mindset of, well, no one ever taught me my taxes. So I, I guess I don't know. I don't have that mindset. If no one ever taught me my taxes, my first mindset, search it. Look it up. Search it up. So I truly don't think a lot of the older generations understand that we're living in this renaissance era what we have look at shannon sharp you feel me he went and had an amazing career in the football now he's doing his media thing also having another hall of fame type career dion you have the basketball players doing their own podcast we are multiple dimensional you can't limit us it's going to get even worse if you're sitting back only focused on doing one thing this is almost an abundance mindset versus scarcity mindset. It's not even necessarily about having an ego. It's just about understanding what it means to be human and respecting humans and saying, well, maybe I can't do it, but someone else can. So we have this mindset. I know I'm kind of going off track, but at the same time, it goes right back to Drake, where he truly does not respect our intelligence. He truly believes that we will never pick up a book. He thinks we're stupid. He truly believes we're stupid. Hey, man, it's, it's only dangerous at this point because now he's exposed. There's a microscope on him. All of his sexual relationships from now on is going to be extremely detailed. And it's going to be, like I said, put on that microscope. And I truly don't believe he's going to do any therapy, any shadow work to actually rewire his newer programming. He has too many yes men, too much money. So it's going to get nasty, man. And you are the average of the... Five people you hang around the most. His best friend is Baca. He went to jail for sex trafficking. He's still doing songs with 21 Savage. 21 Savage was exposed for sleeping with Ruby Rose when she was underage. He went uh, Drake with Lotto's sister. Like, Drake, he has a whole entire history. Y'all know his history by now. But yeah, I, he still does not understand that we see him. It's extremely obvious now. Even with the colonization type of accusations, he's still going and starting an entire different label. Does he not know what happened with I Love McConan? Does he not understand, like, easy, even DJ Academics has the joke about the OVO sweatshop. You're not even doing what you should be doing for OVO. Why are you starting new labels? Can't listen to verify that part. However, another artist, J.O.P., was on the Bootleg Kev podcast, and he talked about this deal. Let's uh, give it a listen. For you, is it kind of crazy to see a guy like Drake, like, tap into the genre? Um, it's crazy as hell. You know what's crazy? He tapped in and he tapped in the, the people that he, we actually, he's doing something with, like, um, it was, it was with us. I have a record label, Street Mob, Street Mob Records, and that's where we got Chino Pacas, and he tapped in with Chino Pacas. He signed to you. Yeah, Chino Pacas signed to me, but we did a deal with him for one album. With Drake? Yeah. So, oh, wow. So, so it's Drake's, like an OVO Street Mob. Uh, he, he had a new label called PFL. Oh, shit. He had a new label called PFL. Um, and... They are being used as narcissistic supply. They are being used as puppets. It's almost like how Donald Trump was uh, using Aiden Ross. And Aiden Ross didn't realize he's being used. Like, they intentionally target these dudes who come from poverty-stricken situations. A lot of these guys were abused as children, sexually, verbally, mentally, physically. These cases happen so much, man. It's so normal in our society Black men, we have the earliest sexual initiation out of any race in this country. So these men from these powerful positions, they understand that. And if you have ever seen the Netflix documentary, How to Start a Cult, you'll understand the key priority of the cult is to target members who come from damaged, traumatized situations. Just look at, hell, look at uh, uh, Tiger King. All of his employees were ex-convicts, convicts. Like they couldn't have any other jobs. The only things they could do was do extremely dangerous jobs working for working with these big cats. 
So, like, they intentionally target these men. They can't build anything with their hands. They're not college educated. Physically, mentally, spiritually, they can't do anything but deceive. They have no other option. So these are the caliber of men that are willing to go put on a dress, to go and go to a ditty party. You feel me? It's about control. It's almost like that scene from Snowfall when the guy got sexually assaulted in the room. It's not about actual sex. It's not about these men being actual homosexuals. It's about the supply. It's the energy. It's the power. It's sodomy. It's sodomy, man. It's about having someone's soul. It's almost like Jeffrey Dahmer. The reason why he used to eat people. It's control. It's a literally, it's like the phrase, when the devil wants to reach you, they send a narcissist. These people are not people at all. They're literal demons. So if you understand anything about just sex in general, I said every single video that I make, the subconscious can't distinguish the difference between reality and fantasy. So the mass majority of sex is mental. That's the reason why foreplay is so important. These men, they understand that. And when they have a narcissistic brain, they constantly need that stimulation. Whether it's gambling, with his gambling addictions, drinking lean, popping pills, alcohol, drugs, smoking, or sex. Whether it's from a man, whether it's from a woman, non-binary, transgender, they don't care. Stimulation, stimulation. Pretty much, it's, yeah, all the OVO game. Pretty much hopping out. So you, we, we're doing a collab. Uh, pretty much, our my label and Drake's label are gonna help out Chino. You know, we, we working on his album right now. Is, is Drake on some of this? Oh no, man. That'd be crazy. That'd be crazy, huh? What's that like? Like, like, has it been a cool process? Like collaborating with OVO on, on an Dope, artist? Bro, it's, um, for us. Imagine Mexican Drake. Oh man, it's it's just lame and corny now. It's like we keep making it obvious that he's playing these characters going from the UK to Jamaica to Houston to Memphis going back to Atlanta then trying to be from Toronto now he's trying to be Hispanic it's it's corny it's like how it's not showing versatility it's showing imposter syndrome it's showing not knowing who you are this is not a versatile thing especially when you're not writing it you're not producing it. You're not putting any type of artistic input into it. You're just putting your face on it. You're just putting your name. That's the reason why I truly believe that Drake really loved the AI. Especially with the AI Tupac. A lot of people were saying like the conspiracy theories about him having some type of uh, financial backing behind that. People kind of want to push that out to try to test it out. I truly believe Drake would absolutely love that. Because he already don't want to write his shit for real. He doesn't want to do the photography, the graphic design, the marketing, the, the music videos. He doesn't want to do anything. He barely even wants to sing. So he could easily just put his voice behind some AI to have somebody else write it for him and put it out and release it and just put his face on it. Like I said, Drake is an enterprise. Drake is a business. He would love that shit. And then he could, would continue just to move the goalposts as he pleases. Same way he moved to goalposts to become the greatest of all time. By saying, well, I'm the greatest of all time because of my streams. Because of the, the records that I sold. No, you don't run shit like that. He doesn't respect the craft. He doesn't respect the music industry. Nah, bro. You can't do that. It's been a cool experience, man. Tapping into like the hip-hop world and the Anglo side, you know? Right. Um, especially... Uh, the, like the work they've been doing on Chino is dope, man. It's, it's it's a different vibe, and Chino's been getting like that exposure, like more on the Anglo side. And no, I saw him get uh, Chino got brought out at a uh, at the Drake tour here in L.A. Yeah, like he, he was like hanging out, hanging like, out with Drake. Played, right there. Like I think I th what's the name of the DJ? Zach Bia played one of his records. Yeah, the crowd was little crazy. Kid doing it, man. He got Drake. Keep telling y'all, bro. Why can Drake not do a stadium? He cannot do a stadium. Supposedly the biggest artist in the world. He can't. Michael Jackson could easily do stadiums. I ain't talking about arenas. I ain't talking about the O2, the Madison Square, uh, Madison Square Gardens. No, I'm talking about SoFi Stadium, the same way The Weeknd did. Yeah, The Weeknd can do it easily. Drake cannot. Because you can't lie behind your streams. You can't lie behind the lip syncing, homie. It's hard to lip sync in the stadium. 
Yeah, nobody wants to hear him. Ha ha. And you know, and I know, and she know. Ha ha. I'm trying to hear that shit, man. In a, in a stadium? At the Super Bowl? Hell no. Nah. I ain't trying to see no Drake at the Super Bowl. Hell no. Nah. Right there, the co-signer, man. What do you think, being from uh, L.A., man, like, uh, obviously, uh, you, you also grew up listening to hip-hop. Of course, of course. What do you think about the uh, the uh, the Kendrick Drake? Uh, Shit, man. I don't know, man. I, I ain't getting in that one. You're like, I'm, I got business with OVO right now. <laughs> yeah, I, I ain't getting in that no one. Say. Yeah. Yeah, no. Hey, man, but shout out to this current culture podcast for the video. See you on the next one, man.